All right. Good morning, everyone. I hope you enjoy the sunshine out there. Um, I think we'll get started. Uh, so just want to remind guys that um, we will have our exam number two tomorrow. All right. And then uh, the next homework is due day Tuesday um, next week. Okay. So it's a, a one week after exam number two. All right. So let's get started. We will be still looking into chapter eight today. Um, capacitance. So let's uh, take a quick review on what we learned last time. So last time we um, take a look on um, the capacitor. So the simply capacitor you could have is to have two metal sheets that is uh, placed against um, uh, close by and then parallel to each other. That's a simplest um, capacitor you could have, you can power the capacitor by charging it. Okay, so then the charge and potential will be built across the two plates. The capacitance, a capacitor um, is equal to um, the charge you can build up divided by the voltage electric potential established. Okay, so that has a SI unit of Farad F. All right. Um, so if you want to calculate a capacitance of a capacitor, so then you start with the equation C equals to Q divided by V. Um, you can assume that the charge built up on the two plates is Q. And then uh, from there, you can solve for what's the electric potential V is being built up, okay? And uh, you can calculate what's the capacitance. So for a parallel plate capacitor, is epsilon naught times the area divided by the separation, okay? So for parallel plate capacitor, its capacitance is proportional to the area, inversely proportional to the separation. You can use the same technique to um, calculate the capacitance for different types of capacitor. For a spherical capacitor, um, you can do the same here, just integration. Um, of E with D dot DL that gives you the the electric potential built up under the charge Q. Then do C equal to Q over V, it will give you the capacitance of that capacitor. Similarly, you can do it for a cylindrical capacitor, okay? So it's doing the same way, um, calculate V first and then do Q over, over V to get the, the capacitance. Um, we also talk about the combination of capacitors in series and in parallel. So if you have capacitors in series, the combination can be represented by a equivalent capacitor. Its capacitor is um, equal to inverse of the capacitance of each capacitor add up and then take the inverse of it because inverse of the equivalent capacitor is equal to inverse of the capacitance of each individual ones add up, okay? When the capacitors are in parallel, on the other hand, then the, um, the combination can be represented by an equivalent capacitor, which has a capacitance of uh, equal to summation of the capacitance of each individual capacitors. Okay, so just add them up in this case. Um, and I think we have also talked about how to calculate when you have um, both combination, combination of both the capacitors in series and in parallel. So you then uh, look into the, the parts that has the simply the ones with uh, just either purely in parallel or um, in series uh, with another ones, then uh, start from there, replace that part with the equivalent capacitor and then um, doing um, check on the circuit again, to look into the parts that you see uh, purely in series or in parallel, okay? And then replace those part or parts with a um, equivalent capacitor and then do this procedure uh, once again until you get to the final simplest um, circuit of either in series or in parallel, okay? Um, we also talked about um, the energy stored in a capacitor, so, um, um, basically, energy starting capacitor is equal to either Q square, the charge build up, divided by two times of the capacitance, or one half of the charge times the electric field between the two plates, or equal to one half of the capacitance times the voltage build up square. Okay, so those three expressions. And we talk about the um, electric 
field energy. So basically, if you have a capacitor, then you have um, an electric field between the two plates, okay? And in that scenario, you have also the energy build up um, between or uh, in the capacitor. So then this is related to the electric field strength of the electric field between the two plates, okay? So the energy we calculated to be equal to one half epsilon naught times E squared electric field squared times A times D, where A times D gives you the volume. So then if you divide U by volume, it will be equal to one half of epsilon naught times E squared. So basically electric um, energy density stored in this capacitor, then it's equal to one half epsilon naught times E squared, where E is the electric field, okay? And this is for um, when you have no, um, dielectric in between the, uh, the plates, okay? So we will talk about um, what's a dielectric in a little bit later today. And then we'll also take a look on what's the energy store in this scenario, okay? All right, but first we will take a look on the example here. So this one says, find the electric energy density between the plates of 225 microfarad. So C is given. Um, the parallel plate capacitor, the potential difference between the plates is 345 volts and the plate separation is 0 0.223 uh, millimeter. So what will be the energy stored in this capacitor, okay? Yeah, so if you use the equation that we have in the previous slides, one half epsilon naught times E squared, so then you need to figure out E first, okay? I think I'll give you guys a couple of minutes to try to solve on this, and then we can take a look on the solutions together, okay?
All right, so I think we can take a look at this together now. Um, so it says to find the electric field energy density, which is uh, we use UE, and that's equal to one half of epsilon naught times E squared, okay? So we only need to figure out what's E here, all right? Now E, um, in this problem, it tells us the potential difference across the two plates, so delta V. And then it also tells us the separation of D. So actually, if you do delta V over D, that will give you your electric uh, field, okay? So now in this case, um, you can simply actually plug in the numbers here, um, will be one half times A point A5 times 10 to the negative 12 uh, in fra over meters. And then times delta V, 345 volts over 0 0.223 given as millimeters, which means 10 to the negative three meters square, okay? So if you do that, um, it gives you this as um, 10.6, okay? Um, in joules over meter Q, okay? So energy over volume, okay? The, I think there's um, 225 micro for uh, we actually don't use it. Um, yeah, because um, you just need E, okay. All right, any questions you guys might have on this one before we move on? Okay, so if we are clear, um, we would move on here. So um, a lot of cases, um, for example, when you see the capacitor earlier for uh, like you have two sheets and then there's um, insulator in between, okay? Because uh, first thing, you don't want to have the two um, uh, metal sheets to be direct in contact, right? And then um, secondly, less actually advantage of putting a um, insulator in between the two, okay? So if you have an insulator between the two plates, then um, the insulator, it's also called a dielectric, okay? So when you see a dielectric, that means it's a piece of insulator material, okay? So that is placed into in between the two plates. So what happens is here, so for example, um, if you have initially like two uh, plates, close to each other in the first figure here, um, assuming that there's positive Q and negative Q being charged onto the two plates. So then there's electric field build up in between the two plates, okay? E is zero, let's say in that case. Now, let's say you have a piece of insulator or dielectric that insert in between the two plates, okay? So when you insert that, the molecules in the oval shapes here will be reorientated due to the external field produced by the two plates, okay? So then you will have positive um, um, aligned uh, close to negative to, of the next molecular in that fashion, and then the negative to the, towards the positive side here. So in that case, um, so then after you insert it complete over there, after the reorientation of material, you can see here. Now the line, electric field line, um, density will be reduced because for every negative and positive charge over here, okay, because electric field line start with positive charge and a negative charge, okay. Then um, when you have those con connected in a line here, so basically it reduces the electric field line densities inside there, okay. So you can see electric field lines are being reduced when you have present of the um, the 
insulator or dielectric um, material inside it. So your E field will be reduced uh, given the same charge over there. Now E field is being reduced, so then V potential equal to or proportional to the E field potential is equal to E times D, right? Electric field times the distance um, if this is uniform. So then potential will be reduced, okay? V is reduced. Now Q is the same, capacitance equal to Q over V then will increase. So then the capacitance of the capacitor will increase in less sense, okay? So uh, mathematically, um, this is what you can uh, derive. So then E field is reduced by a number called dielectric constant K. So reduced by number like that. So V then equals to E times D will be reduced by also a factor of, or actually it's a kappa, not K. It looks like K, but uh, should call it kappa, a factor of kappa. So then V is reduced by kappa. Now V is in the denominator. Kappa is the denominator of denominator will flip up onto the kind of numerator. So kappa times Q over V. So your uh, capacitance then at the end um, increased by a factor of kappa, okay? So kappa is called the dielectric con constant of the material of the insulator, okay? Um, for different um, insulator, you can see there are different um, dielectric constant. For water, it has a very high dielectric constant, okay? Now, you don't see people put water in between two plates because that's not referring to pure water. So if it actually indeed is a pure water, it will have dielectric constant, okay? Now, most of the cases, water is contaminated like um, electrolytes, ions. So then the, this guy, this um, reduce a lot, okay? But if indeed it's pure water, it has kappa of 80.7, 0.4, okay? Um, other materials like mica, paper, you can actually use just paper, plain paper as an insulator, okay? Or mylar, okay, they have all different um, dielectric constant, okay? Air is having dielectric constant of almost one, which is equal to vacuum. Vacuum is considered to have dielectric constant of one, okay? So, um, dielectric constant is also referred to, uh, related to the permittivity of the materials, okay? So um, if you have kappa times epsilon naught, epsilon naught is the permittivity of vacuum. So then kappa times epsilon naught gives you the permittivity of the materials, okay? So the materials, um, um, permittivity is equal to kappa times epsilon naught in this case. All right, and then you can see kappa is always greater than one other than uh, for the materials, uh, other than it's a vacuum. So vacuum is one and everything else is greater than one, okay? Um, again, referring to pure materials. All right, so in that case then with um, dielectric constant, your capacitance will in be increased by kappa. Okay, so originally, if without kappa, if in this case, we write it as, as C sub naught, C sub zero or C naught, which means the dielectric, uh, the capacitance of the parallel plate capacitor without um, dielectric. So after you insulate the dielectric, the capacitance will increase by kappa. Okay, so then in that case, case, energy will be increased also by kappa because energy is equal to one half C V square, okay? then the energy density will be increased also by kappa. Okay, so then energy density for a um, parallel plate capacitor with dielectric is one half kappa epsilon naught times E square. In the case of, if you just have vacuum between the two plates is one half epsilon naught times E square, okay? All right, now let's take a look on the example with a dielectric constant, uh, dielectric. Uh, capacitor has dielectric in between the two plates, okay? So this one says a parallel plate um, capacitor is made from two aluminum foil sheets, each 3.8 centimeter wide and 6.1 centimeter long. Between the sheets is a Teflon strip of the same width and length, that is 0 0.025 millimeter, millimeters thick. What's the capacitance of this capacitor? 
Okay, so the dielectric constant of the Teflon is given as 2.1, okay? So um, you will be using the C equal to, now this time, kappa times epsilon naught times A over D, okay? I think that's the equation given in the previous slide. You can take a look on that one. All right, I'll again give you guys a couple of minutes to work on this, and then we can take a look on the solution together in a couple of minutes, okay? All right, let's take a look on this one together. Um, I think it's kind of straightforward, but um, you guys need to pay attention to the unit conversions here. So we are looking for the capacitance of this new capacitor. So with dielectric constant, you should use kappa epsilon naught as area divided by the separation, okay? Kappa is given as 2.1, so you put the numbers down in here. Um, okay, so for kappa dielectric constant, it's basically the ratio of permittivity of materials over permittivity of the vacuum. So it actually, it's a, a ratio, so it doesn't have a unit. Okay, so 2.1 and times epsilon naught is 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12 farad times the area, it gives you width and length. So you can do um, 3.8, but it's given in centimeters. So times 10 to the minus two meters, okay? and multiply by 6.1, that's also in centimeters. So times 10 to the minus two again, that will give you the area and then divided by the thickness of the two. So 0 0.025, this time this one is given in millimeter. Okay, so minus three meters. Okay, so pay attention to those unit conversions. All right, and then the rest uh, should be straightforward. So you will be getting about um, C equal to 1.7 times 10 to the minus 12, okay, um, for R, or uh, pico for R, I can say 1.7 pico for R, okay.
All right, let me know if you have any questions about this one. Okay. Um, so, so when an insulator, when we refer to an insulator, we, um, so that means it doesn't conduct um, current, right? However, if you apply very large electric potential across an insulator, actually it will break down the dielectric. So then it will be penetrated and it will become conductive, okay? So this is uh, called elect dielectric breakdown. So for different material, the um, electric potential needed to break it down is different. So for my car, it has 100 millions of volts per meter needed. Okay, for Teflon, it needs 60 million. Okay, all these are in very high voltage, okay? So even air is 3 million volts per meter strength needed, okay? So this is referring to dielectric uh, breakdown. All right. Um, on insulators, I think we'll be looking at a couple examples here. Um, and then we'll probably, uh, if we can finish the lecture earlier today, we, I will let you guys go earlier too, uh, because we will have exam tomorrow, okay? So um, the first um, example here, um, it says two capacitors each have two conducting plates of surface area A and an air gap of width D. They are connected in parallel as shown in the figure and each has a charge Q on the positive plate. So um, then a slab that has a width of D and area A and dielectric constant K is inserted in between the place of one of the capacitors. Calculate the new, new charge Q prime on the positively charged plate of the capacitor after electrostatic equilibrium is re-established, okay? So initially, we don't have this insulator comes into one of this. Initially, these two are identical capacitors. They are made of the same area and same separation. They have the same charge of Q, all right? Now, after you insert this dielectric into one of them, um, let's take the right one over here. So then the capacitance of this guy will change, right? It will increase. In that sense, then the electric field between the two will decrease, all right? And then the potential will also decrease. So then the potential on this uh, capacitor is decreased, so then it will be different from the potential on this one, right? So if you have potential differences across the two plates, then the charge will be redistributed and um, reaching to a sta electrostatic equilibrium, right? So then charge will be redistributed. So it's asking you um, calculate the new charge Q prime on the positive charge plate of the capacitor. I think it refers to the one that you inserted the insulator. So that's just refer to that one for now, okay? What would be that Q? Q prime. All right, you guys can um, think about how you will be um, solving for this one and then we can take a look on this one together.
All right, so let's take a look here. So this is what you have initially, you have the two connected together, okay? They have the same initially um, C0, okay? Now the quantity is given here, um, the known quantity is given as area and separation and then Q, okay? So we can ex express C0 with that, um, those uh, parameters. So, so it should be epsilon. Now this is a constant sign area times over distance, okay, over separation. This is a capacitance for a parallel plate capacitor without dielectric. So epsilon naught times the area divided by that, okay. And then it says Q is also the known. So that one and with Q charge, okay. So after you put the insulator over here, so this guy on the left still have less C uh, capacitance initial, right, C naught. Now this guy will have a different C um, that we can call it C prime, okay? Or you can just call it C because now it's uh, it's a different than the C naught. Okay, so C in this case would be equal to kappa epsilon naught times A over D, okay? So that's what you have. And kappa is also given, all right? Now you, it's asking what will be the Q prime, okay, over here. So then, According to the definition, C is equal to Q. In this case, it should be Q prime over V, okay? So, um, so then Q will be equal to, so you're looking for Q. Q prime will be equal to C times V, okay? C, you can use this guy. Now, what will be the V? So the only thing you need to figure out here is V, what will be V, okay? So, um, after you insert the insulator over here, now electric field changes over here, so there will be charge distribution, okay? But the total charge over here should be still 2Q, right? Two times of Q on the top plates combined, okay? So Q total should be still equal to two times Q, okay? As the original ones, originally, initially Q total is equal to two times Q. Okay, so that stays the same because you only have redistribution of the charges. So from one plate to another plate or from another plate to a, this plate. Okay, so redistribution of charges, but the total should remain the same. Okay, so this is the steel Q total. And in this configuration, we can see the two uh, capacitors will share the voltage, right? So they are actually in parallel to each other. Okay, so then the equivalent capacitance C E Q on this case, because they are parallel to each other, should be equal to one plus the other, okay, C. They are in parallel, right? So this is equivalent. Now, given the total Q and then the equivalent, you can actually calculate what's the new V, okay? So V then will be equal to Q total over this C E Q, okay, it will be the same uh, V for this guy and that guy, then given by that, okay. So your C E Q is the two add up C naught plus C, that's equal to epsilon naught A over D plus kappa epsilon naught A over D. So then that gives you, um, kappa plus one times epsilon naught A over D, okay? So then your new V is equal to the total Q be twice of a Q given divided by kappa plus one epsilon naught A over D. Okay. Which, if you rewrite it, um, because there's numerator under the numerator, so you can rewrite V is equal to 2 over kappa plus 1, the constant numbers, and then Q, and then D over epsilon naught times A. Okay, that's your. V, so then Q prime should be equal to C times this new V. 
C is the kappa epsilon naught times A over D, okay? Multiply by this two Q over kappa plus one times D over epsilon naught A, okay? And now you can see the D and D actually cancels out. Epsilon naught times A cancels out as well, okay? So then this new charge will be equal to two times kappa over kappa plus one times Q. So that's your new charge on the right capacitor, okay? Any questions you guys might have? Um, if not, we are going to move on to the last example here. This one says, find the capacitance of the parallel plate capacitor showing the figure here. So let me explain the figure over here. So you have two plates um, areas of A separated by the distance D and in between the two plates, there's a combination of different dielectric here. So on the left half, um, you have kappa one on the top half, top left half. And then uh, on the bottom here, you have kappa two. On the right half, you have just one dielectric kappa three, okay? So, Let's see how we can actually solve for this one. Okay, so on this guy, plate area A, Now in between. This kappa three, kappa one on top, kappa two at the bottom, and then there's um, again another plate at the bottom over there. Okay, this is separation given as D. So A and D, kappa one, kappa two, kappa three, they are the given parameters. Okay, so in this case, you can think about um, you actually divide this into two, into halves first. So then on the right here, you have a capacitor with dielectric constant of kappa three, kappa three, okay? Um, so yeah, let's just use um, this two lines represent a capacitor. Now on the right, you would have two capacitors, okay? So on the right here, on the right branch, actually there are two capacitors in series with each other, okay? And then that's in parallel with that guy, okay? So you can actually um, represent the example with this circuit over here, okay? So that's this C1, C2, and C3. So basically then the problem becomes you have C1 and C2 are in series with each other. And then um, C1 and C C2 are in parallel with C3. Okay, so that's your um, circuit. You are looking for CEQ of this 
All right. So when the two, so these two are in series with each other, you can repre replace that just with one equivalent of C12, okay? And then this one is C3. So C12 then is equal to, because they are in series, is one over C1 plus one over C2, and then inverse, okay, of that. Then CEQ, is these two in parallel to each other. So C12 plus C3, okay? So now let's figure out what's C1, C2, and C3, okay? Um, C1 is referring to this capacitor. So C1 should be equal to kappa one, epsilon naught, times the area of this half, okay, would be, so the area is not full area, but half of the area, okay? So, kappa one epsilon naught and the area is this time is one half and then divided by the separation. The separation on this half is only half, right? So D over two, okay? So half there. So now this is uh, basically half and half cancel out. It's still kappa one epsilon naught A divided by the D, okay? Similarly for the left bottom half C2, is equal to kappa two epsilon naught, area is half, and then separation is half as well. So kappa two epsilon naught A over D, okay? So then um, you can calculate C12, the equivalent of one and two in series, that's one over C1 plus, um, so one over C1 plus one over C2 inverse, okay? One over C1 should be the inverse of this. So it's D over kappa one epsilon naught A plus D over kappa two of epsilon naught A, and then take inverse of that, okay? So this is then basically, um, you can see this is one over kappa one plus one over kappa two. And then there's common factor of D over epsilon naught times A there, okay, so minus one. Now one over kappa one plus one over kappa two equals two kappa one times kappa two at the bottom here, on the top, you should have kappa two plus kappa one, okay? Or the other way around, that doesn't matter. D epsilon naught times A, and then the whole thing inverse. So that would be the first turn inverse and the second turn inverse. So the kappa one, kappa two, kappa one plus kappa two at the bottom, and then inverse epsilon naught times A over D, okay? This is your C12. Then this guy, the total equivalent should be equal to C12 plus C3. Now C3 is equal to, C3 is this right half part of capacitor. So it's kappa three epsilon naught on this half, the area again is one half of the area, okay? However, the distance this time is the full distance D, okay? So then this is equal to kappa three over two epsilon naught A over D, okay? And that, that's your C3. So this is equal to then kappa one, kappa two over kappa one plus kappa two, epsilon naught A over D plus C3 is kappa three over two, epsilon naught times A over D, okay? So that's common factor there. You can um, single out those. So kappa one, kappa two over kappa one plus kappa two plus kappa three over two, then epsilon zero times A over D, okay? That's your final answer for the equivalent resist uh, capacitance of the showing in the figure. All right, 
see if I can show the full picture. Body. <laughs> All right. Any questions you guys might have on this one? So if not, then uh, we will stop here for today. Um, I will see you guys tomorrow in class um, in seat for the test, okay? All right. See you guys tomorrow. Enjoy the sunshine yeah. outside.